Hi everybody, my name is Kapil Arora. I'm a Cloud Solution Architect at NetApp and today we are going to see a demo on how to build Jenkins CI CD pipelines with Docker, Kubernetes and NetApp. First of all, I'm going to show you my sample application. Then we'll look at the Kubernetes cluster. Then we'll look at NetApp integration, Trident. We'll see how this application that we have is deployed as Helm. I will try to introduce you to Helm and show you how Helm helps us create our packages. Then look at our Jenkins deployment and how we have built our pipeline. We will make a code change and then run the Jenkins build and see how Jenkins build pipeline works and go through each step one by one. Now let's look at our sample application. This is a web application built using Node.js. It's a very simple application where you can click and add logos on the screen at any location that you'd like to. So basically you can make your own designs on your screen using logos. This is a stateful application wherein the location of these logos is stored in a Redis database. So if I refresh this page or reload it, the design that I made stays and these, this location of the logos is persisted in the Redis database. Let us look at my Kubernetes cluster now. You can see I have a four node Kubernetes cluster with one master and I have two deployments here, one for Jenkins and one for my web application that I showed you earlier. And we have corresponding pods for these applications running in this environment as well. We can also look at our production application. So you can see this application has two containers. One is for the web application, which is coming from my Docker Hub registry. And the other container is a Redis container, which is our database. Let's see now where NetApp comes into the picture. As you have seen, our application is a stateful application and has a Redis database. And we want to store the data of this Redis database in a external volume. And in our case, this is NetApp NFS volume on a non-tap system. This integration with NetApp systems is made possible using NetApp's integration with Kubernetes called NetApp Trident. NetApp Trident offers dynamic provisioning and self-service creation of persistent volumes in a Kubernetes environment. NetApp Trident is an open source project and is also a containerized application which runs in your Kubernetes cluster. Trident not only offers self-service provisioning, but also offers features like cloning directly to developers or users of Kubernetes, which we are actually going to use in our build pipeline to create a clone of the production database for our test instance on which we run our automated tests. Let me quickly show you Trident and how we have configured cloning in our Helm chart. You can see here that Trident is a deployment in Kubernetes and it is running as a pod and for the users to actually be able to provision volumes, we have configured different storage classes which the users can use to request volumes using persistent volume claims. The developer is completely unaware of the existence of Trident and he will just use storage classes and create persistent volume claims. And internally, Trident will talk to the NetApp ONTAP system or any other NetApp system to basically provision these volumes and create persistent volumes in Kubernetes for the user. Now if you look at the Helm chart and how we are using cloning, you can see that I'm using a annotation which is provided by Trident, wherein we can provide a name of an existing PVC and Trident will clone this existing PVC for us and fulfill our new PVC. So this means that I can create clones of my existing volumes which are running my databases or any other large data sets and provide clones of these databases or volumes in seconds 
irrespective of how big the data set is. So even if you have a one terabyte uh, database, you can clone it in seconds using this feature from Trident and NetApp ONTAP. Now, this is where I would like to introduce you to Helm Charts. Helm Charts are basically package managers for Kubernetes. And you can build your own Helm Charts or you can download the ones which are available freely on the internet. So if we do a Helm search, you can see there are lots of standard stable Helm Charts available which you can use to deploy your applications. So if we see here MySQL, so I can deploy a MySQL Helm chart just by saying Helm install uh, minus minus name, MySQL test, and the name of the Helm chart. And this is actually going to deploy a MySQL database for me, and it is going to deploy all these resources automatically without me thinking about it. So you can similarly create Helm charts for your applications or your deployments and standardize them in your organization. So let's look at what we have deployed using Helm charts in this environment. And you will see that I have a Jenkins running here and the MySQL test that I just ran. And my production application, my web application is also running as a Helm chart. Let's move on now and look at our Jenkins and what we have configured in our Jenkins uh, environment. So this is my Jenkins running also as a Kubernetes application. And for my web application, I have configured a build. And you can see it is actually a pipeline which has multiple steps, including deployment in the production environment, and before that, running test instances, doing automated tests, etc. This build pipeline is actually written in Groovy and it is part of our GitHub code base for this particular web application. And if we come to our web application, we can see we have a Jenkins file here, which is written in Groovy and it has multiple stages wherein we are doing different operations. For example, we are checking out the code, we are building and pushing the container using docker build and push commands, we are installing our test instance using a different port, and to deploy this test instance, we are actually using the production database as the, as the clone, uh, which is where the NetApp integration comes in and our Trident plugin actually helps in, in enabling that and which is already part of our Helm chart. You can see we deploy this Helm chart providing the clone source and a new port and then we done some automated tests and then the user has the chance to actually do manual tests and approve or, or reject this particular build and in the end we deploy this particular build in production using kubectl set image command and at the end we delete our test instance. Now let's go ahead and actually make a code change in our application. So as we have seen that we have a logo image which we use for this particular image and for the change what I'm going to do right now is actually I'm going to change that image. And instead of the NetApp Pub logo, I'm going to use a picture of the NetApp CEO. So this is my style sheet where I have actually provided the image location or the name of the image. And as a developer, for example, I'm going to make this change and just say using NetApp CEO's image instead as the commit message and now this particular change has been committed and now if we run the build we should be able to see the change in our test instance and if we publish to production also in our production environment so let's go back to Jenkins 
and start a new build for our application. So you can see that the build has already started and a new pipeline has been created. Now we will go through each and every step and look at the logs and see exactly what is happening when our build runs in, in Jenkins. So let's look at the logs for SCN checkout. So you can see the commit message using NetFCEO's image instead is seen here. This means that we have pulled the latest code and we can also see that there is a previous commit after the last build that we did. Now the second step here is to actually create the Docker image. So this is the Docker build logs that we see here. So basically the image is getting built. Then we log in into Docker registry and we are actually preparing and pushing our image using the Docker push command. So that's basically our uh, Docker build step here. The third step here that we have is to actually install a test instance which uses the Helm uh, installation of our application on a different port using the production database and with the latest image. And now you can see some tests are being run on our application and we have the ability to actually run some manual tests and we have a link here. Now let's actually open our test instance on a new port and we see that there is a new image and if we compare it with the production instance we can see that the logos are placed at the same location as we previously created them so what this means is that we actually clone the production environment to create test instance using the same database and the database has been cloned and it's not the same database so if I make some changes here you will notice that I don't see the changes on the production side right? so there are two instances of, um, of the same database and also if I make changes here I should not be able to see them here and I'm actually pretty happy with the changes and I'm going to go ahead and say yes to the production deployment and complete my build pipeline. So let's see what happened in the production deployment step. And you can see that we changed the image of the production environment to the latest image. We, at the end of this build pipeline, we actually deleted our Helm test instance that we deployed. Now, if we come back here, in our production environment, we see that our changes have been deployed. So this is how we actually completed our build. And if we come back here and try to access our test instance, we should not be able to, to reach it anymore because the test instance has been deleted. Now let us quickly summarize on what we saw today in this demo. We looked at a stateful web application and we saw how we used Helm charts to deploy it. And we learned generally about what Helm charts offer us in application development environments. We learned that this application has data, which is persisted in a database, which in turn sits on a NetApp volume, which is provisioned in a self-service manner by NetApp Trident. We saw how we created a Jenkins CI CD pipeline using Groovy Jenkins file. And at the end, we also saw how we used cloning as a feature provided by Trident and NetApp to clone this production data set and run automated tests in our build pipeline. If you are interested to know more about NetApp or NetApp Trident, feel free to join our open source community at netapp.io. Thank you very much for watching.